Have you ever wondered about the divine mystery of the Bride of Christ and her enthronement? This question invites us to delve into the mystical layers of the Bride of Christ's upcoming coronation on the Latter-day Pentecost in heaven, an event so grand it echoes Christ's enthronement in the heavenly sanctuary back in 31 AD, on the day of Pentecost. But before we start, please like and share your thoughts about this interesting topic about the other comforter and female messiah and subscribe if you haven't done so yet, smash the bell to receive all our notifications. Let us journey back to that pivotal day in 31 AD. Two significant events unfolded. In heaven, Christ, alongside those resurrected with him, the wave sheaf, was inaugurated into their mediatory. Let's go back in time to the significant day in 31 AD where two crucial events took place. In heaven Christ, along with those who were resurrected with him, known as the wave sheaf, were inaugurated into their mediatorial kingdom. At the same time, the power of the Holy Ghost, which was present at the ceremony, descended to earth upon the heads of the first fruits, which included 120 individuals and 3,000 others in the form of tongues of fire. This divine power endowed the disciples with the ability to preach the gospel of Jesus' resurrection to the Jews, present from every nation under heaven's kingdom. At the same time, the power of the Holy Ghost, present at the ceremony, descended to earth upon the heads of the first fruits, the 120 and the 3,000 as tongues of fire. This divine power endowed the disciples with the ability to preach the gospel of Jesus' resurrection to the Jews present from every nation under heaven. But the first fruits did not ascend to heaven. Instead, they remained on earth, serving as God's earthly government, tasked with preaching the gospel first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and then to the Gentiles. Thus, two ceremonies took place, one in heaven for the wave sheaf and one on earth for the first fruits, marking their inauguration into their mediatorial work on earth. In essence, heaven and earth were in complete unity, as we explore the mystery, we encounter the veil. This mystical symbol of the Bride of Christ separated the holy and most holy chambers of the earthly sanctuary. It concealed her presence in the most holy and prevented any approach to the divine presence of God that appeared above the mercy seat between the two cherubim. This veil signifies that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made known. It was a figure for the time then present. As we journey through history, we see the foreshadowing of this grand event. The day of Pentecost in 31 AD marked an important milestone in the divine timeline. This was not just an ordinary day. Rather, it was a day when heaven and earth came together uniquely, symbolizing the unity of the divine and the earthly realms. On this day, two significant ceremonies took place, both crucial in understanding the divine plan. The first ceremony occurred in heaven. Christ and those resurrected with him, known as the wave sheaf, were inaugurated into their mediatorial kingdom. This marked the start of Christ's divine rule, a reign characterized by grace, love, and mercy. The power of the Holy Ghost, present at the ceremony, was then sent down to earth, signifying the divine blessing and empowerment of those on earth. The second ceremony unfolded on earth, specifically involving the first fruits, the 120, and the 3,000. These individuals were showered with tongues of fire, a powerful symbol of the Holy Ghost's presence. This divine outpouring equipped them with the ability to speak in different languages, empowering them to spread the gospel of Jesus' resurrection. These individuals did not ascend to heaven, but their role was no less important. They were to remain on earth, taking on the mantle of God's government, tasked with spreading the gospel first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and then to the Gentiles. The two ceremonies, one in heaven and one on earth, mirrored each other, symbolizing the unity of heaven and earth. This unity is a key theme in understanding divine plans, for it shows that God's work is not confined to heaven alone but also extends to earth. This unity set in motion a divine plan that would culminate in the future marriage of the bride and bridegroom, a grand event that would once again symbolize the unity of heaven and earth. These events set the stage for the future marriage of the bride and bridegroom. The veil in the sanctuary holds potent symbolism in this divine narrative. It's a tangible representation of the spiritual divide between humanity, ensnared by sin, and the purity of the divine. Yet it also holds a deeper meaning, 
a mystic representation of the Bride of Christ. You see, this veil, it shrouds the most holy place from view, concealing the divine presence of God manifested above the mercy seat and between the two cherubim. It's as if the Bride of Christ herself is veiled from sight, hidden within the most holy place, her presence a mystery to all. This draws a parallel to the biblical tradition of a bride being veiled until the moment of her marriage. The Bride of Christ, too, remains unseen, her unveiling set for a time of divine appointment. It's a symbolic representation of anticipation, of a promise yet to be fulfilled. But this veil also signifies separation. It serves as a constant reminder of the chasm between sinful humanity and the Holy God, a divide that could only be bridged by the sacrificial blood of Christ, the High Priest in this spiritual tableau. The rending of the veil at the ninth hour, when Christ gave up the ghost on the cross of Calvary, was a symbol of this separation of divinity from sinful humanity. It was a moment of profound change, a new and living way opened up to humanity. The veil, that once signified separation, was torn, symbolizing the removal of the barrier between humanity and the divine. And yet, despite this momentous event, the veil remains a potent symbol. It's a reminder of the sin that once separated us from God and the sacrifice that bridged that divide. It's a symbol of the mystery of the Bride of Christ, veiled until the time of her unveiling in the most holy place. This veil, thus, tells a tale of separation, mystery, and promise. It serves as a symbolic representation of the spiritual journey, from separation to unity, from mystery to revelation, and from promise to fulfillment. The rending of the veil symbolized a monumental shift in the spiritual realm. With these words, we begin to unravel a profound mystery. The veil, a mystic representation of the Bride of Christ, stood as a barrier between the holy and the most holy apartment of the earthly sanctuary. It veiled the Bride's presence in the most holy place and blocked all access to the divine presence of God, manifested above the mercy seat and between the cherubim upon the mercy seat. This veil signified that the way into the holiest of all was not yet known while the first tabernacle was standing. It was a figure for that time, a symbol of the separation of divinity from sinful humanity in the spiritual temple Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. When Jesus gave up the ghost, the veil was rent, symbolizing a dramatic shift. It was a proclamation that a new and living way was being opened to humanity. This new and living way was consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. As written in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 and 20, having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Until the death of Christ, the veil over the face of God, the Shekinah remained. It had always symbolized the separation between sinful humanity and this holy God. Yet, on the cross, this middle partition was taken out of the way, granting mankind free access to the divine intercession in the sanctuary above. The rending of the veil marked the end of an era and the beginning of a new chapter in the spiritual journey of humanity. It signified the removal of the barrier between us and the divine the opening of a path to redemption, and the promise of a new and living way. With the rending of the veil, the path was paved for humanity to access the divine. With Christ's sacrifice, the veil lifted, revealing a new pathway for humanity. This veil, once a symbol of separation between the divine and the earthly, was no more. It had always signified the chasm between our flawed humanity and the holy God. But with every thread of this veil that tore away, the face of God, the Shekinah, was gradually unveiled, and a new era dawned upon mankind. The lifting of this veil was no ordinary event. It marked the end of an old epic and the beginning of a new one. It signified that humanity, once estranged from the divine, could now access the holy presence of God. It was a moment that echoed with the promise of divine companionship, the promise of the Holy Ghost. But what does this access to the divine mean for us? It means that we are no longer confined to the earthly realm. We can step into the Holy of Holies, not with fear, but with boldness. Because of Christ's sacrifice, 
we have been granted the freedom to approach the mercy seat, where God manifests his presence. This newfound access is not a one-time event but an ongoing reality. It is not limited to the high priest entering the Holy of Holies once a year, but extends to all of us every moment of our lives. It is a constant invitation to enter into a relationship with the divine, to experience God's presence in our lives and to be guided by the Holy Ghost. However, this access comes with a responsibility. It calls us to live a life worthy of this privilege. It challenges us to embody the values of love, humility, and justice that are central to the divine character. It encourages us to become co-creators with God, participating in the unfolding of his kingdom on earth. The lifting of the veil was not only a moment of revelation, but also a promise of divine companionship. And with this promise comes an invitation, an invitation to step into the divine presence, to engage with the Holy Ghost and to live a life that reflects the glory of God. The divine timeline is leading us to a grand event, the final enthronement. This is not just any ordinary enthronement, Rather, it signals the forthcoming marriage of the bride and bridegroom in the most holy place of the sanctuary in heaven. Just as the day of Pentecost in 31 AD marked the beginning of Christ's mediatorial kingdom, the latter-day Pentecost will mark the enthronement of his bride. This will take place amidst the celestial panorama, with the 144,000 standing on Mount Zion under the full manifestation of the Holy Ghost. This manifestation will be as a cloud by day, and a fire by night, signalizing the marriage of the second Adam and Eve, and their coronation in their kingdom of glory. This is not a mere event, but a divine promise, a holy ceremony, and a symbol of the unity of heaven and earth. As we cast our minds back to the day of Pentecost, we remember two significant events, the inauguration of Christ and the wave sheaf into their mediatorial kingdom in heaven, and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost power on earth. These events were not just ceremonies, they were divine appointments, a synchrony of heaven and earth, and a foreshadowing of the final enthronement. Just as the disciples were invested with the power of speech and languages to preach the gospel of the resurrection of Jesus, so too, the bride will be invested with the power of the Holy Ghost to rule in her kingdom of glory. As we anticipate this glorious event, we are reminded of the divine promise and the unity of heaven and earth. The final enthronement is not just a future event, it is a divine promise, a holy appointment, and a symbol of the unity of heaven and earth. It is the culmination of God's grand plan for humanity, the marriage of the bride and bridegroom, and the beginning of their eternal reign. Our journey through time reveals a divine narrative woven with symbolism and promise. We have seen the enthronement of Christ in heaven on the day of Pentecost in 31 AD, where he was engaged with the Holy Ghost in his mediatorial kingdom. This auspicious event was mirrored on earth, signifying the unity of the heavenly and earthly realms. We have delved into the symbolism of the veil, a barrier between the divine and the earthly, and its rending at the crucifixion of Christ, which opened a new and living way, granting humanity access to the divine. This story tells of the Bride of Christ, veiled in the most holy place, waiting for the day of her marriage to the Bridegroom. As we wait in anticipation, we are reminded of the divine promise, the unity of heaven and earth, and the upcoming marriage of the Bride and Bridegroom.